Sometimes you just need to take the slips out and bowl defensively. And you also need to be careful with your computer's defense as well. If you need a VPN, go Nord. NordVPN.com forward slash Kimber to get a two year contract with a discount plus four extra months and gifts in some markets. It's completely risk free with Nord's 30 day money back guarantee. The link is in the show notes. So put in some dot balls and turn them into maidens via NordVPN.com forward slash Kimber. Welcome to the scoreboard. Good morning, everyone. And uh, let us start uh, with the fact that the scoring was so fast in this match. The cow all opted out instead of slogging. But QDK was very solid. But the real bursts were from Nicholas Puran and Colonel Pandia, who did some happy slapping. But Sam Curran wouldn't stop getting wickets, which helped a lot, as luck now could never completely unleash the bam bam as, as they wanted, especially at the end, as they ended up nine wickets down. But the game looked like it was going to be ended, or at least you know, under control by Shikar and Johnny up top. But Bairstow went out and Darwan slowed down. And so did Punjab after Prab Simran was dropped and caught in back-to-back -back balls. Eventually, we had a lame Livingston trying to find boundaries, but he was just, the rest of them were a little bit too slow in losing wickets. Plus, when Livingston finally hit a really good shot, he hit it into spider cam, which is not ideal. But the real story of this match, probably, and certainly this innings, is Mark Yadav, who bowled over 150 clicks repeatedly and was really fast all the way through. The boy has some serious pace, and he even got a little bit of something-something out of the wicket at times. Umran, who? Anyway, let's go over to the scoreboard. If you've got questions, always, um, Super Chats is the best way to go. Uh, but uh, uh, any comments are very, very um, nice and I love them and put comments in is what I'm trying to say in some form of English that is not particularly coming out of my mouth at the moment. But let's start with the main part of the show, the scoreboard. So let's start with Mike Yadav's speed. So let's, I'm not going to read through these, or maybe I will. No, I won't. But we've got here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What's that? Eight. I missed one. So eight out of 24 balls over 150 kilometers an hour. That's where the real pace is. Uh, he looked fantastic watching him bowl. I like his action. The, you know, it looked like he was fairly accurate for someone of that speed, which isn't always the case. Although we have seen with a lot of modern bowlers, you know, people like Unric Nokia, even Mark Wood, they're a lot more accurate than fast bowlers generally tended to be back in the olden days. Um, but it was just exciting. You know, 20 lakh is what he cost. Uh, Feels like they've already got their money's worth on that one, but let's see what happens with him uh, further into his future. But I just wonder, this is his uh, record so far. Um, oh, get rid of this stupid thing here. Um, you can see this is his bowling average in list A cricket, and this is his bowling average in T20. I don't think I updated that today, so I'm not, I, I didn't have a look. But again, we, we certainly saw with his, um, that sometimes you see someone who's very fast and they come into this level of cricket and they get us all excited. Then you look at their record, and you're like, well, they haven't really got wickets before. In a very short period of time, and I do mean that, I think he's played, this might have been his 11th T20 game, and he hasn't played too many more list A games. He has taken a lot of wickets. So you can get excited about the pace and the short balls and what we saw today, but you can also say that there is something there behind that also makes a little bit of sense. Uh, so looking forward to seeing him bowl a lot more. Also, pretty happy that he was bowling on this wicket and not the old Lucknow wicket, but we'll get to that We'll get to that later on. Um, uh, so I wanted to talk about Sam Curran, the death bowler, because I think he's quite fascinating. So this is since the start of 2019. You can see that Curran's been going at about 11 runs and over, and the uh, IPL in general is 9.8 runs. So that's an extra run per over. I don't think it's dreadful and the reason i don't think it's dreadful is if you have some sam curran in your side you also have him in your side because of his fielding and more specifically his batting right so if you do have a, a you know ha have him as your backup death bowler you can still say to yourself well one extra run per over is not horrendous it's not good but it's not horrendous but i want to go a little bit deeper uh into this so this is his average and you can see again he, Oh, I've written economy there, but it's average. Yeah, it's average. I can tell it's average. You can see he's averaging just over 25. And 
Um, I think all the bowlers are at, what are they, about 22 and a half. So he's also not taking wickets. So I just wanted to point out that it's not as if he's one of those death bowlers like someone like a Jason Holder or an Andre Russell who gives you back wickets at least, although today he took them. And this, this is including today's numbers. So this is current at the Dow. Uh, and I just wanted to show, so down here is, in the green is all bowlers. So that's that 9.8 and 23 average, right? So he's had one year in 2020 when he was better than that, where he won an economy of 9.25, average of 22. Good numbers, you'd be happy with that. 2019, let's throw that one away. That, that didn't work in any particular way. 2021, I'm trying to remember, was it 2021 or 2022? Yeah, so uh, 2021, he's going at almost two runs a ball and not taking any wickets. And you can see here, this is slightly better in 2023. So, so far this year, he's on average. Now, I would be happy with him around here, right? 10.4, because I am getting extra batting off him. Not today, but in general. And also, I'm hoping that I can get some batting off him between 12 and 18 balls per match. It would be somewhere where I'd be looking at for him. And I also can get between what six and 12 balls a match with new ball swing when it swings right you don't need him to be a great death bowler but he also can't be a bucket with holes in it and these are buckets with holes in them you can't bowl these guys and especially with sam curran because he does he generally when he, even when he bowls when he was player of the world cup and he bowled really well at the death it was generally um, his economy that led led it. He's an economy led bowler compared to someone like Dwayne Bravo, who is probably a wickets led uh, bowler at, at the end. Uh, so if they can keep him anywhere near here, that is a massive plus. Didn't help them today, but well, in that they lost the game, but it did actually help them ke keep themselves in the game because I think if Curran hadn't have taken those wickets and bowled well at the end, uh, it could have really been quite horrendous for them. Um, and they wouldn't have even had a chance. They at least had a chance because of his bowling. All right. Uh, poor runs batting. So what I've done here is the white one is runs per 24 balls. And the red one is average. So when he first started um, up until that 2018, this is all T20. This isn't just IPL. But when he first started, he was kind of a lower order hitter um, and fantastic at it. I remember, I reckon it was around... It must have been around 2016. A friend of mine sent me a message going, "What do you know about him? Because he looks incredible." And I was, like, and he was averaging like, well, "What did he end up averaging that year?" 19. And I think when I looked at him, he was probably averaging around 15 or 16 in his career, because you can see here that he just hadn't made a lot of runs. But my friend was right, and he was absolutely coming, coming good. So this is phase one of Puran, really. And then you can see 2018, 2019 is the phase where. No one's really worked him out. He's now suddenly a top order batter. Obviously, uh, in 2019, he was one of the best bats in the ODI World Cup, despite having never played all that much list day cricket. And you can see it's interesting that the numbers match up. But teams started to work him out a little bit more. Bowling off spin, keeping the ball away from him, you know, these sorts of things. Bowling shorted him for a while. All these different options that they went at. And Puran had to work it out. And you can see it, it did affect him. He never went back to that level of player. But he also wasn't as strong. This last year, he averaged 29. Um, and you can see that I think his strike rate was around 155, 160 at that time. I think that's what Puran should be. I don't think you need him to be averaging 35 just because he does bat so quickly. You really want him to maybe average slightly less than other players. Um, but with that, have an incredible strike rate. And you can see he's up here again. This is a really, really good sign. Um, He's just a, a, have I got the colors wrong here? I've got the colors wrong. That's going to annoy me. Anyway. Um, yeah, I, yeah. so I think that's a really, really good sign um, uh, for him and, and where he's going. But, but you can see he's not as consistent as you might want a star T20 player to be. But, but having said that, I, you know, he's a very smart player and he's also must be i'm just trying to work out his age here he must be hitting peak yeah he's 28 for me i'd be really really excited if i had him on a contract right around now because the next couple of years could be quite tasty for him anyway colors uh 
so this is a strike rate in in the power play batting by Shikadawa, and this is he's in the white here, and the red is the entire league. And I looked this up today, just more randomly, because he was he was striking quite quickly again. I thought to myself, you know, I wonder what his overall record is. And if you go back, maybe last year, even the year before, we did a video about how Shikadawa essentially when he stopped getting paid big money is when he started playing like a big money player and then has started to earn it ever since. So you could see early on really struggled with the strike rate. And other than these two years here, uh, where, um, where to be fair, batting was quite um, slow. Uh, so, so I think, so you have a look here, the, the batting strike rate of all openers is 118, 111, uh, and then it gets up to what is that 121 there. And if you look at Adam Gilchrist's number, his strike rate is 140 in that period. Uh, and But he's got a true strike rate of like 26 or 27 because <laughs> he's so much better than other players in, in, in that same period. But you can see it actually slows down a little bit and then obviously starts to come up. This is when the wobble ball starts to get bold, when um, when uh, Kookaburra changes the balls. So there's a bit of a dip and now batters have got used to that and, and uh, handling the new ball without too much trouble there again. But you could see that this is always my frustration with him is that he's he was getting paid superstar rates and wasn't playing like a superstar. Back here he was, then he's very average for a long period. And then this is the bit where he doesn't get paid anymore um, and suddenly kicks into this gear. I think you want him above the line, right? Even if he's an anchor, I've got no issue with that. But I think I want him slightly above the line because you want him to put a little bit more pressure back. If he's on the line or below it, can you not get another average player to come in and do that? And he's not an average player. So I would like him to go above it. Um, I think this counts today's as well. Uh, obviously, this is from a low sample size so far. But but you have seen, there's really only, I would say only four major plus seasons when it comes to him batting in the power play. But there is a reason why he looked a little bit more exciting today. This is Shikatawan in the power play in the IPL versus all bowling, 123 strike rate. Pretty much bang on average. And this is it against left arm orthodox. He's never been dismissed against left arm orthodox in the power play. And it's very rare anyone bowls it to him. But again, today we we, um, we saw him go to go. I spelled orthodox wrong. That's going to annoy me. Um, but yeah, so we know that that kind of matchup is always going to go into his favor. So I thought that was quite fascinating. Uh, and this is Johnny Besto. Uh, I've been fascinated for a while at the fact that they seem... Very, very committed to Johnny Besto, the IPL opener. And we really haven't seen him consistently be the kind of star that he should be. So let's just go through his ears here. Um, oh, this is strike rate in power play batting. Sorry, everyone. That should say Johnny Besto's um, record by year. Sorry, my fault. So this is all openers since 2019 when he started, right? So this is why I talk about, you know, these sort of marks of being normal. Averaging 34, a strike rate of 135, right? So 2019 is the first year. And as we all remember, he went absolutely ballistic. Averaged over 50 with a huge strike rate that year. Since then, there really hasn't been a year all that close to that. I think this is a good season. Anyone who can do 4140, I'm, I'm a big fan of 4140. I like that as a number. It means you're slightly above average in both metrics. So that's quite handy. I also like this year. He averaged under 30 this year, but it was strike rate of 155. And when you're paired with Shikadawa, um, I think that's fine. And that's obviously uh, this year so far, which isn't a big sample size. I really want best those years to be probably around here, right? Of that, you know, averaging between 30 and 35, let's say, at a strike rate of 150. Because you just going back to Shikadawa, you need to make up for the fact he's probably not going to be massively ahead of the strike rate. And if he's going to bat longer, I think that allows you to do that. So a year a year like this is is fantastic because you, you're making a lot of runs. But I'd be more than happy with stuff in this sort of area as well. So he doesn't have to average all that much. But I, I also point this out to show 2019, 2020, that's a, that's a failure for him. 2022... Strike rate is okay, and batting with Shikadawa, I don't see this as a massive failure, but it's not a great, it's not a plus year for a player, um, an opening batter from overseas, right? They are fully committed to this bit. 
And we saw that again, and he looked very, very good today. If he can come good, that partnership makes a lot of sense. It just hasn't really been as good, as consistent as they would want. And it is the Bearstow part of it that is more of an issue. I think Shikha Darwin's had one down year, I want to say, um, in the last five or six. And, and, and you can see here that, you know, Bearstow's had a couple that just haven't worked as well. So really interesting um, to see how that goes for the rest of the season. This is Krunal Pandya's um, strike rate in the IPL. So we all remember back in 2016 when we were like, well, this guy's incredible. Teams worked out how to bowl to him very, very quickly, right? And you can see all the way through here that teams have worked out to bowl to him. This is this year. It's not from a big sample size. But, so does this mean that they have got to a point where they are, where teams have, uh, have run out of options and he's just evolved a little bit? Is it just fluky from you know a small sample size? Whatever that may be, this Krunal Pandya, I think he's absolutely fantastic. I think peak Krunal Pandya in T20 cricket, I don't have him that far off um, Ravi Jadeja's peak, right? That ability to hit sixes and to bowl really, really dry and be a good athlete around the field. Like he's, his peak is up there, but a little bit like Jadeja, he does kind of blow hot and cold. And some of that is being a left arm finger spinner, if we're being honest. I mean, that's just part of it. Krunal Pandya also has lots of troubles getting wickets because of the way he bowls. Again, that's all, all fine. But he really shouldn't have, what's this? Three years where he's striking about 120. He should at least be 130, 135 with his skills. So I thought the way he batted today was an interesting sign. You know, knocking back singles at the end and the whole, the whole nine yards there. I don't, 170 seems optimistic looking at all this. I'd take anything around 150, even 140, I think would be a huge boom for them. Boon? I say boom. Anyway, uh, and this is his average if you go through. So again, that first year he was averaging 40, um, comes down to 35. And that this is another reason why I say teams have worked him out a little bit. Um, I haven't got the 2024 data on here yet. I, I've no problem with him averaging 20, right? But you can't average 18 with a strike rate of 120, right? If you're going to average 18, you want that strike rate to be 130, 135. So, uh, you know, you can you can think of him as a as a batter where you don't need that high average, but you do need him to provide some power, and I think he can do that. And we can see the last couple of years he's been around that. Well, he's really since twenty eighteen been around that twenty mark. I'm more than happy with that, but you do need a little bit more sixes and fours, I think, from from that mark. And just to prove to you uh, what I was saying here, so this is runs per eighteen balls. You can see, and this is not with 2024 not on, you can see that these two match up very, very clear. So does he need to stay in a little bit longer in order to strike? Or is it just that teams worked him out a little bit? I would probably suggest here that teams just worked him out a little bit. Um, but he's got to, he's got to fight back. Um, and it showed really good signs of that today. All right, what else we got? I should remember all this. I did all this. Um, <laughs> Cheyenne was at the game today. Uh, IPL grounds in the last four years. Oh, yeah. So there was a betting podcast that, that did a um, uh, that did a show about always going unders at Lucknow. Um, and I hope their listeners knew that Lucknow's pitch had changed. But this is why you always bet unders at Lucknow. 6.76 uh, was the runs per over there. You can see just above Pune as the slowest scoring. And no one else is under seven, right? You know, you've got Kolkata up here at 8.6 runs and over. You know, uh, there's some really good fast scoring pitches up here. Um, and this is throughout the history of the IPL. Sorry, no, it's not. It's the last four years. I get that right. You know, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised there aren't a couple more, uh, a little bit higher than this. But yeah, you. so you get the idea. Lucknow is one of the slowest scoring games. I think I did this at about the 16 over mark. So I don't know what Liam Livingston did to this at the end. But this is what has been the previous years. And this is this year. So if you have been betting unders at luck now, um, now's the time to start betting overs. That looked like a really good wicket to me. I thought Punjab had plenty of chance to chase a big score. I thought had luck now not lost wickets, they could have sc scored a lot more runs as well. So I thought there was a lot going on um, out there uh, from that wicket. And clearly whatever they did to it uh, was uh, violently different than before. But that's it for the 
he says optimistically. Yeah, that's it for the scoreboard part of the show. We'll take a quick break here and we'll go through your comments and questions. If you've got any, obviously, uh, Super Chat's the best way to go, but I can see there's a bunch of other people who put comments in as well. Uh, but I am Jared Kimber. This is the scoreboard and we will be back to chat to you in a moment. If you need a VPN, go Nord. Use nordvpn.com forward slash Kimba to get a two-year contract with a discount plus four extra months plus gifts in some markets. It's completely risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. The link is in the show notes. Protect your computer like a blocker protects the stumps with Nord VPN today. Celebrate your cricket heroes with Bodyline t-shirts. Explore their player-inspired tees featuring legends like Sachin Tendulkar, Brian Lara, and Viv Richards. They also have team-inspired designs and options for hardcore cricket nerds. Their collection is a must-have for the true cricket enthusiast. All right, welcome back. Uh, Oh, I need to make these things a little bit bigger for my old man eyes. Azamir says, is Ellis too good to sit on the bench? PBKS, PBKS, that's... Should be PK. Um, should weigh the trade off with leaving Ellis out versus Bearstow. Play a local batter um, for Harshall. Um, I like Ellis. I don't know. So they've got Rabada, Curran, uh, Rabada, Curran, Arshdeep. Am I missing someone else who's good with the ball? He can't remember any names right at the moment. Uh, who have we got there? Curran, Arshdeep, Rabada, and then you got Harshal. I really like that bowling lineup. So what what role does Ellis do? I suppose he's a death specialist. So are you then you're they're betting on Curran probably at the death at the moment, a combination of Curran and Harshal. It probably what you're talking about, maybe in the end, depends on how good Harshal can be, right? So my feeling is he's gone for runs in both games. Let me just check his numbers. Uh, he went, he's gone for 45 runs in both games. Oh, and 47 runs. Oh, he's played three games now, hasn't he? Yeah. So I don't think Alice is like the answer, but they're going to have to ask a different question. If Harshall can't do what he needs to do, um, uh, they're going to have to change things around a little bit there. But thank you very much for your super chat. Box box says, not one box, double box. I once saw um, Nokia bowl a knuckleball in swinger during the power play. Can bowlers actually control the seam presentation of a knuckleball? Yeah, so the problem with a knuckleball um, when it comes to swing is that generally to get the ball to swing, you want the ball to rotate back on its axis. And generally when the ball comes out of your hand, generally, at all times, it rotates back on its axis. Uh, and with a knuckleball, the ball doesn't rotate. It just goes down like that rather than like that. So that does take away some of the ability to swing it. There's a bowler who does swing it, who's famous, and I can't remember who that is, but had worked on it. But Benny Howe told me that it was possible and that he had worked on a slow, like a coming wide on the wicket out swinger um, knuckleball that was aimed at leg stump and would hopefully swing back to hit the top of off or, or miss off stump. So that, when, you know, if someone tried to swing it to the leg side, uh, there was they had two chances of getting beaten. And I'm, the pro- positive, I talked to another bowler who said that they had, had seen it as well. But it doesn't happen as much. It is a harder thing. Sorry, there's something wrong with my lights today. Give myself a bit more light there. Um, uh, so yes, uh, so yes, it is possible, but it's not. It, it's not something that a lot of people do, and it's not really why you bowl the knuckleball anyway. But you could if you wanted to, um, in, in principle. Uh, TRD says, "Can you do a video on betting markets? What is decent props to look at, etc.? Maybe even show us some clips. The, the uh, slips. Sorry, clips. Yeah, in my head." So I don't bet on cricket. I do I, I do the Betfair exchange a little bit. I had a fantastic run for about the first 30 bets. And now I have to work out exactly what I want to do with it. If I want to invest real money or get other people to invest money in it, all those sorts of things. But I will be doing a video on what I did right and what I did wrong when it comes to the exchange. But if you really want to know anything, um, Turbo, the best way to go is via the Cricket 8 watch alongs. So we'll be doing watch alongs probably Saturday next week, but certainly Sunday next week. And we will be talking all the way through the betting markets, plus analysis and you know um, other information that you might need um, if you want to be a smart fan. You know, cricket intelligence is that thing. In fact, you know, you can see the Cricket Eight logo up on the screen. They're a partner with us here. That's the best place because Rob Barron will take you through every kind of market. 
Uh, but if you want to know what my favorite market is, it is when the bookies have forgotten, and I've never bet on this, but I love watching it happen, when the book bookies have forgotten that there's been a partnership for a long period of time and it's getting towards the death. So maybe it's the 17th or 18th over and they don't adjust the numbers for runouts and they're still good 18 to one. And you're like, well, if they don't lose a wicket here, slogging the ball up in the air, they might get a run out off the last ball. Uh, that's my favorite weird prop bet um, uh, that, that I really, really enjoy at the moment. Um, as I said, I've never actually bet on it. I'm not that interested in betting. I'm more interested in learning how the markets work and you know all these different things. Pratik said, just wanted to say, Ravi Chandran Klaassen. <laughs> It was, we talked about it the other day, didn't we? It was, I, I still remember, what, I must have been working out while I was watching the game. And like, I almost fell off the machine, right? I was like, what the hell is going on? He's just smacking Norkia everywhere here. I loved it. Love every part of it. No one knows, has, how's it going, Jared? So um, no one knows has joined our team. He's actually, me and him had a big chat this morning about stats. So if you see a lot of advanced stats coming up in the next couple of days or couple of weeks, know that it was no one knows. That didn't come out as well as I wanted. No, you now know it's no one knows 2024. Um, so big, uh, big thanks to him for coming on. Uh, Andy says, is Mitchell a bad fit with Dubé if he can't punish hard lengths? Is Ali a better fit since he can also bowl? Well, Darren Mitchell can bowl. Did bowl in the last game. Absolutely start. Um, no, I think I think Darren Mitchell can um, pull and hook, can he? I don't think of that as an issue for him. Uh, he's a tall guy, so maybe sometimes he gets in his own way. And it might be that some of those tall guys as well, when the slow ball bounces come in or the change of pace um, short balls come in, they might have some issues. But I would assume, and I'd have to go back to Mitchell's record, that that shouldn't be a problem for them. But they've probably put him in to monster, you know, medium pace and, and spinners, if we're being honest. But Mo and Ali is not a better player of the short ball than Daryl Mitchell. It, that It's not even close, right? Like, definitely, Daryl Mitchell is the better player of the short ball out of those two. Uh, but thank you very much for your super chat, Andy. All right, I'll take another quick... I take that off the screen. So I'll take another quick break here and I'll go through uh, the chat to see if there's anything else. But um, big thanks to everyone. Remember, like, subscribe, do all those things while I, I go through to see if you've said anything incredible that I now, now need to talk about. Thanks to the kind folks at FlexiSpot for looking after my office and my butt by sending me their E7 Pro desk that save your favorite desk heights at a touch of a button. You don't have to crank anything. This thing just finds the height that you like and you can work. And their BS12 Pro Chair that supports my posterior while I'm recording, well, this ad and all my shows. If you need great desks, especially ones that change heights or the best quality chairs, head on over to FlexiSpot today. All right. I've got a couple more questions, but um, I've shut off, not a, shut off the chat. You can keep chatting. Um, but I, I take in everything. So if you're desperate for another question, it have, have to be a super chat from here. A man says, what makes Sam Curran such a sometimes good T20 bowler? I suppose at his absolute best, he swings it. So in the power play, when he's bowling really well, that ability to swing it. Since he started bowling the wobble ball, I don't think he swings the ball as much anymore. And I think it did affect him. We saw the same with Mitchell Stark. Um, but, you know, Trent Bolt is now a better bowler because he has the wobble ball. So you can see why they chase that delivery. Uh, at the death, my memory of him being a good death bowler is one tournament. So I thought he bowled brilliantly in Australia, but those are much bigger grounds. And I thought he bowled brilliantly to the dimensions of those grounds. So he used the big boundaries. And I think he's a very smart cricketer in that way. He doesn't have a great slow ball. He's not particularly fast. His York is fine. He's not. He's also not someone I would call deadly accurate. So I don't think he should be a great death bowler. But I think he thought his way through it, which I do. You have to respect that, even if it was just for one tournament. But yeah, I don't, I don't think he has... Outside of England or New Zealand, he's probably a two and a half over a game bowler, right? And so then it's down to how good his batting is. And there's another question about his batting, which, I, which I'll put both of these together. Darshan says, shouldn't current have come in at four today, or I guess any time there's about eight overs to go. Let me just go back. I've just got to think of what the score was. Um... So that would have meant he would have come in. No, you would have won at four. Oh, well. I would have thought Livingston probably should have come in at four today. And then I had no problem between, I don't, 
between Jitesh Sharma and Sam Curran. I mean, what, do you, what are you hoping for the sort of the best case scenario of like, so Jitesh Sharma has a strike rate of 148, right? In, in all T20 cricket so far. Um, and we, we've seen what he can do at his absolute best. And then Sam Curran, what would he be about 135, uh, 133. So I think it pro I don't have any issue with him not coming into bat, but that is kind of the problem with him. And it's the David Willey problem and the son on their own problem. It's not that these guys aren't talented with the bat, right? They all have skills that work. The issue is where exactly in the batting order do they make your team better? Cause Sam Curran, really isn't a great death player. I think if Sam Curran ever fully realizes his potential, he should be averaging about 25 with a strike rate of about 130, 140 batting at number four, maybe that kind of, that kind of period, maybe number three, even you can find top order players that can do that. Right. And he's not, I don't think he's a fantastic late order player. And it's the same with David Willey. David Willey's biggest skill is batting in the power play. So if you don't use David Willey in the power play, Sometimes he gets a little bit lost. And Sun on her own, again, you know, he's got three different spots that he can bat in the side and you're hoping that one of them is working at the time that you need it to work. But the reason that they're not brilliant players is because they are a little bit flawed, right? Like if they weren't flawed, they'd be batters. They're not batters. And Curran has the best chance of becoming a batter. Well, certainly the other two are 100 years old, but <laughs> Curran has a really good chance of becoming a batter and he believes he can be a specialist batter. He's, I think he's still a long way off that, but... I think that's a good goal to have and you should work towards that. And he would be a fantastic cricketer if that ever happened. But yeah, so I, I think you probably, Darshan, uh, rate his batting a lot higher than I do at the moment. But I do think the issue is like, like when he came in the other game, what was his role when he made those runs? My guess is his role was to come in and swing the willow a little bit, right? And he didn't. He ended up playing a really good anchor innings. And that's kind of the problem with Sam Curran at the moment. He's not really an anchor because he doesn't, have those all those skills but he can certainly play i've seen him play those innings for england and, and you know for surrey and also in the ipl occasionally but he can't do it consistently and he also doesn't hit hard enough and to put pressure back on in a david willie or son on her own sort of way consistently again um doesn't quite have that or i shouldn't say consistently he doesn't have their power so you kind of left with this guy who's kind of halfway between um both and I think that's the issue with Sam Curran's batting. And that's also why he needs to make his death bowling work. So Sam Curran's really on the edge of being one of the most highly played T20 players in the world and someone who you can't play in every game. And that's the issue with him at the moment. Addy says, cricket's issue with not allowing substitutes, at least injury ones, is so visible these days. Well, no sports really allow um injury substitutes, as I've said many times before, is that other sports allow normal substitutes. Ishan's injury derailed um, Delhi and Livingston's one killed the chase with a loss of two wickets. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I think we I think we should have proper substitutes. I think the impact, I hate the impact in the super sub and all that. Just have substitutes. If you're going to have substitutes, have substitutes. 15 players, you can pick how you want to use them. Uh, we can come up with, you know, no bowler can bowl more than this amount of overs. All that sort of stuff is more than fine. And I think it would be a fantastic way uh, to have the best batters going up against the best bowlers. Um, and it's, I think it's the way forward, but cricket's not quite there yet. It, it seems to be like the la one of the last holdout sports against substitutes. And look, it's given us some great moments, you know, Gordon Greenwich and Graham Smith and, you know, Rick McCosker, Elise Perry, all, you know, we have had fantastic moments because of these injuries at times. But how many other games has it ruined in, in between? But it will, of all the changes, it would I think it would massively change the fabric of the game. I'm, I'm okay with that because I've seen that the game's fabric has changed many times before. Changed when we went from uncovered to covered pitches, but no one seemed to moan about that one. Well, actually, some people moaned. Some people moaned about everything. Um, as a mere, no, as a mere said, I would argue Bairstow's batting can be compensated easily by one of the Indian options. No. Beep, beep, and I'll tell you why. Because Bairstow can strike a 155 strike rate for a whole season. There isn't an Indian option who can do that. That is why he's there. He's a perfect match for Shikhar Darwin. But he has to, he has to be informed. 
and he has to be ready. That is that the point with Besto is his ceiling is so far ahead of any backup Indian batter's ceiling. And that's what they're chasing. That's why I showed the graphic from before. So no, n- n- this is not correct. But you've got a super chat where I'm sure you'll tell me even more. Uh, I disagree with you, Jared. Alice is the answer. W- what? He should bowl at the death. Bat at three, keep wickets to take over their selection, coaching and scout. Look, I love Ellis. And and there are other teams that Ellis would fit in. I, I think part of the issue with Punjab is I don't really understand what they're... So, so let's just go back to it because we said it briefly before, right? So Sam Curran, I, let's, just, let's talk about their best positions. Sam Curran needs the brand new ball. Arshdeep Singh needs the brand new ball. Kagisa Rabada needs the slightly new ball. So why have we got three of them? Already caused a problem, right? Then you've got Harshal Patel. If Harshal Patel was a death bowler, I think he would, he would fit this situation perfectly. But he's not a death bowler, right? He's probably a middle overs bowler who can bowl you one or two at the death at most, right? I would say one, but two. And so... You've got three guys fighting for the new ball. No great death bowler. Rabada is the best death bowler, but I don't think he's a great death bowler. And an all-rounder who's a good plus bowler in certain parts of the game and struggles at other parts of the game. So you can't throw Ellis in here. So you and I both rate Ellis, and I think that's absolutely fine. But how do they fit him in? It doesn't make any sense because they want Curran's batting. They want Harshal's batting. Obviously, Harshdeep uh, needs to play. Um, and Rabada needs to play. So they've caused this mess by having two left-arm swing bowlers at the top. Right? So Alice should come in for Curran, but then they don't have the batting. So it's, it's, a, it's a mess. It's, 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 they haven't put the squad together all that well. Which is someone who worked for the Punjab owners for a day on another franchise. I'm not surprised. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Uh, and last one from Andy. He says, who would you draft for a T20 team? Patarana or Tushara? Who is the higher floor and ceiling? Do you know what? I haven't seen enough of Tushara all the way through. Um, whereas I have seen, you know, I, I, there's obviously Patarana has been around for a little bit longer. I think looking at your question, I would say that Tushara has the slightly higher ceiling. They might both have low floors, by the way. But I think Tushara has a slightly higher ceiling. But I have liked the way that Patharana has already started to learn to bowl with the new ball and, and at other periods and he's rounding out his game. It's really probably that, right? I don't think in modern T20... It's so hard. This comes back to what we're talking about with Curran and Arshdeep and all these sorts of situations. You end up in a situation where if you are a single use of bowler... Um, so, uh, my God, what's his name? Is it Mohit Sharma um, at Gujarat, right? No. Is it Gujarat? No, it's not Gujarat, is it? Yes, Gujarat. I'll get that eventually. If you're a single usage bowler like he is, and almost all your use is at the death, the rest of the bowling needs to be built around you, right? And with him, you go, absolutely fine, we can do that. Uh, with Pathrana and Tushara, they're maybe not quite there, but again, these are bowlers who can do that. But what's the difference between that and Malinga and Bumrah is the ability to be great at the death, but you also need a wicket early on. And they can do that as well. doesn't mean that they have to be spe- specialists in that point of view, but they need that round of game. And I think both of these bowlers have a similar issue, which we know what their main skill is, but their main, main skill is going to wax and wane. What can they give you as a secondary skill with a bowling? Because it is, it is much harder to build a bowling attack around bowlers who are completely one-dimensional so you know so Samuel Badri absolutely fantastic but West Indies set their bowling up around him and RCB never did that and that's part of the reason why they didn't have him so if you do have one of these players on you want them to continue to develop and grow so if I was if I had either of these guys in in, locked up on a contract and the mega auction is coming up so it's not quite the same but if I had either of these guys locked up on a long-term contract what I would do is I would take them to all my other franchises around the world, but I would also give them to other franchises where I would pay them. But I would say to these franchises, he needs to be a new ball bowler for you. We need him to bowl the new ball. We need him to bowl two in the front, two in the top four overs and two at the last four overs where you can get your usage off him. But you don't have to pay him. We'll pay the bill. 
that's what IPL teams should start to be doing with players like that. That's what I would do. But as I said, this is the problem with the mega option. You can't lock up a player like this. And so they, no one ever, there's not enough development done because you're not sure you're going to have them in a year's time. It's a real flaw in the system, I think, at the moment. Because if we had a better, if we had a better auction slash draft, if we had better trades, if we had longer contracts, you could start to upskill these players incredibly. And then when you upskill them, even if you want to get rid of them, they are worth more to you when you when you ship them out. And so I do think that that's one thing that annoys me a little bit about this whole thing. Uh, but thank you, Andy and Azamir, for your uh, couple of super chats. Who else was there? Pratik. Uh, was there as well um and everyone who's in, I, I now see the chat suddenly pumping everywhere but no one knows uh, obviously was in their role who else we got harsh um and a few others uh that are in there as well. darshan had a question didn't he so big uh, shri i see shri in there as well lots of questions about nathan ellis i don't think he fixes this team that the problem the problem is what what we are doing now is that sort of thing of if you bring ellis in the rest of the team is going to be you know uh, have issues if you bring best if you take best out there's going to be more issues if you take current out there's going to be more issues there's no probably there's no solve for this because there is a a problem with the spinal cord right and you can put as many band-aids on the knee as you want but you know if your backbone is broken it's very hard i think i think all that holds up Anyway, that's me for today. I'll be back again tomorrow after the double headers. Mon uh, well, we've got a really cool video about the IPL and win percentage over on the main channel. If you haven't been, go over. I really, uh, it was a fascinating one uh, to put together. So hopefully you will like that. And then on Monday, we'll have the first power list of this here IPL. I am Jared Kimber. I generally remain Jared Kimber. Big thanks to Cricket8 and Nord for their sponsorship. And we'll play some ads on the way out. We'll see you again next time, but like this and subscribe and do all those cool things. Remember that cricket is a funny game. A hundred years before we protected our head, players looked after their groins. So don't be as stupid as old cricketers. Protect your computer now. NordVPN is the protection I use when facing cyber short balls or when rights issues try to dismiss me. Geoblock so you can watch all the cricket you want. Grab your NordVPN deal by going to nordvpn.com forward slash Kimba. Support us on Patreon. Join for exclusive perks like AMAs, live calls with me, and a vibrant Discord community. Enjoy ad-free content, early podcast episodes, and access to my email, plus behind-the-scenes stuff. We've built our channel on Patreon support, so a huge thanks to everyone who has helped. If you make a lot of content like me, oh, you are going to need help. And that is why we use Minvo.pro, a slicing and dicing tool that uses AI to conjure up incredible clips from your podcasts and meetings. If you make content, go to Minvo.pro to cut it.